some techniques for uh, management of lateral condyle humerus fractures. And we have two experienced senior faculty uh, with us. I'll just uh, give a brief introduction about our faculty and then we'll start. So the uh, first talk will be by uh, Harish sir. It will be on close reduction and pinning and uh, uh, posterior open reduction for lateral condyle fractures, uh, followed by uh, talk on anterolateral open reduction for lateral condyle fractures by Ritesh sir. So uh, uh, Harish sir is a consultant pediatric orthopedic surgeon at Vasudev Children's Orthopedic Center in Bellary and Wimps uh, Bellary. He did his uh, MS orthopedics from Father Muller Medical College in Mangalore. And he did his pediatric orthopedics training in CMC Vellore and in, from Hong Kong. And Sir has uh, multiple publications to his name, including a recent one on lateral condyle fractures and their management. And Ritesh Sir uh, is an additional professor in IGIMS Patna. He did his MS orthopedics from Patna Medical College. And he did his pediatric orthopedics training under Dr. Jauri from uh, Mumbai. And Sir also has um, multiple uh, publications in peer-reviewed journals. And I want to thank both our faculty for taking out their time and joining us today. Um, Harish, sir, you can uh, share your screen now. There's no option for sharing screen. So the bottom, sir, share screen. Oh, there you are. Would you allow me to share a screen or something like that? Because it's not showing up here. Sir, it is allowed. Uh, sir, I have allowed all participants to. Sir. Record, so record captions, compare settings. Uh, good morning, Dr. Harish. You can see uh, more options in the bottom. Sir, so either a green share screen or in the more, if you can see. Uh, I'm looking at that. I'm not showing in the settings. I'll do one thing. I'll log out here and I will try in, uh, and log in from other computer. <clears throat> okay, sir. So, logged in from the web page because there's some problem with the app. Maybe okay, sir. sir. Then we can start with presentation of Dr. Ritesh. Okay, sir. Okay. Ritesh, sir, can you share your screen? Then? Is it visible? Is my screen visible? is paused. Screen sharing is paused, joins. There is some problem, I think. Hello, sir. Yeah, uh, screen sharing is paused. I'm uh, opening it again. Okay, sir. Yeah, 
Is it visible? Yes, sir, it's visible. Sir. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Yeah, good morning, all. Thanks to Dr. Marlin, Dr. Joyce, and all team uh, took this opportunity to uh, talk about the techniques of surgery in pediatric orthopedics. And today, uh, I'll be talking about anterolateral approach for lateral condyle fractures in children. As we all know, these are very common fractures in children. And many a times, these fractures are missed due to slight displacement, improper x-rays, and sometimes we don't have good facility to get a good quality x-ray. So in those conditions, we may miss these fractures, but many a times they are diagnosed well. And Dr. Harish will be talking about the close reduction technique and posterior approach to these fractures. The indications for open reduction in these fractures are mainly displacement when it is more than two millimeter, song type four, a five. If we go about with Milch classification, Milch type two, a Jacob type three fractures needs open reduction and fixation. Many a times closed reduction done, which fails, or we are there is late displacement of fracture. In cases of de delayed presentation and non-union of lateral condyle, these cases needs open reduction and internal fixation. Uh, excuse me, sir. sir. Sir, can you put on the uh, presentation? So we are on the first slide only. I have moved on. Okay, is, it, sir. is it moving or not? No, sir. For us, it's on the first slide. So the presentation is not on for the screen. Is it visible? Yes, sir. Uh, but the okay, sir. The slideshow is not on yet, sir. So if, uh, you can start the slideshow, then it will move. Slideshow is already okay for us. It is. Uh... Can you see? Yes, sir. Are the slides moving? Uh, no, sir, it's not moving yet. So can you just uh, do it once from the beginning and then we can see if it's... Should I stop and share, and share it again? Uh, okay, sir. Can you see? Yes, sir. We are on the fourth slide, milch types, lateral yeah. condyle fractures. Yeah, yeah. Is it moving? Yes, sir. Now we are on the next slide. Yes, sir. Is it clear? Can you uh -huh. see the slides? Yes, sir, we can, but the slideshow is not started for us. I think, sir, you can still continue like this. So I think there's some issue with the Zoom today. Can you see? Yes, sir, we can see the slide of Jacob's classification. Slide is moving, uh, rotation of fragment. There's some problem with that, I think so. Yes, sir. Pause. I can. Can you see the slides moving? Uh, no, sir. It is on the uh, sixth slide, Jacob's classification. Now we are on the next slide, so close reduction, the paper 
by song journal fiction of songs class classification yes sir is it fine yes sir is this moving so again it's not moving there is some problem with that i think so yes sir yes i think now we came to the case 5 year old child yeah so directly going to the technique because there is some problem with the slide sharing i think uh, okay sir i'll go through the technique now okay sir okay this is five year male child who presented to us uh, three months later trauma he was having pain over the elbow and you can see that the fragment is displaced it is rotated and uh, the fragment is rotated so in this particular case according to songs classification 5 or jacob 3 we decided to go for open reduction and internal fixation so whenever we are planning surgery in these cases we need to keep in mind few of the points the first is displacement of fragment how much it is displaced because and what is the duration of injury because that decides the amount of surgical dissection we may need to do in uh, these cases then how is the ot facility where we are working do we have cm facility or not because cm makes a lot of things easier for us then availability of implant mainly the kys and that surgeon too should be trained with the trained staff to help him so these all things makes the surgery easy is it visible joy yes yes sir yes sir second thing which we should keep in mind is the patient should be in supine position on the table for anterolateral approach tourniquet is applied so that we can uh, get the clear well, uh, clear surgical area and the arm should be by the side to help in uh, easy visual uh, visibility with this cm so this is the position of the patient okay this is the position of the patient with the arm out by the side c arm coming between the surgeon and the ot table from the foot end and it is kept in ap position where you can by moving the limb we can go for ap and lateral view the monitor is opposite so that it is easily visualized the surgeon is standing just next to the surgical area and assistant is helping him from the head end so this surgical uh, this position of all the instruments surgeons and assistant makes the surgery easy now before taking the incision there are few of the lateral approaches like kaplan's approach where we go through the extensor digitorum communis and ecrb in kaplan approach when we extend lower down we may hit the posterior interosseous nerve so in that case we just uh, we take the incision going down 2 to 3 cm of the elbow joint posterior lateral approach that is coacher's approach and conius the interval is between anconius and extensor carpi annularis this tier will be talked about by dr harish so i'll not go in detail so this is the surgical area we can see that anteriorly there is biceps brachio uh, brachialis and over the lateral epicondylar ridge from where the brachio radialis and ecrb and ecrl are getting are originating Oh, excuse me sir so the slide is not moving now i think so this one is moving ha huh, sir now we come this one yes. is moving okay sir so if you if you see our incision for the lateral approach is we palpate the 
lateral epicondylar ridge because in acute trauma many times it is not palpable due to swelling so in that case we just gently milk this area to palpate the lateral epicondylar ridge and keeping the limb in 90 degree flexion and pronated forearm we take the incision go through the interval of brachioradialis and triceps and gradually erase the soft tissue mainly the extensor carpi radialis longus and brevis from the anterior surface of the humerus we don't touch the common origin of the extensor muscles which lies more on the lateral and posterior aspect rather than on the lateral and anterior aspect so you can see here that by doing all by gently elevating these muscles we can see the anterior aspect of the elbow joint this is the plane through which we go we elevate the brachioradialis and extensor carpi radialis brevis after exposure we use after exposure of the fragment we pass a k-wire through the fragment which is used for reduction of manipulation of fragment and reduction is the video visible yes sir it's no. not playing sir okay slide sharing is not working in fact so uh, can you directly play it on the slide then we can probably see it sir. Yes, sir. It's visible. Can you reduce the sound? Here you can see that the soft tissues are gently retracted anteriorly and palpating the lateral epicondylar ridge. Here we are palpating the lateral epicondylar ridge. Gently elevate the brachioradialis and the CRL anteriorly. Four point visible. Is four point visible? Joints. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We are on the reduction and retention slide. Yeah. So one by one, I will show all the videos there only. So okay. yes, see that after exposing the fragment, uh, we have used a K wire to make a drill in the proximal fragment of the fracture area here, and this hole is made to use it for a towel clip. 
so that we can hold the fragment, reduced fragment, reduced fracture there. And then we check the alignment going more medially to see the reduction on the trochlear area. You can see that the fragment is gently exposed since yes, it's a three months old fracture. Uh, sorry, sir, we can't see the video, sir. Yes, sir, it's visible now. Sir. You can see that the fragment is gently exposed by removing the soft tissue lying over the fracture area. Since this is three months old fracture, where a lot of soft tissue comes over the fracture area, it needs to be exposed. And this is the metaphyseal area. The posterior is the soft tissues. This is not touched. We are dissection remains more on the lateral and anterior aspect. Gently we clear the anteriorly the joint area, the capsule which gets adhered on the anterior surface of is gently cleared off. Then capitulum, capitulum is identified, holding with a toggle clip, and this is the rotation is made. Okay, you can see this area. <coughs> so the fracture is reduced with the help of K wire. The reduction is held well, and then it is fixed with, it can be fixed either with the parallel K wires or with the cross K wires. So in our case, holding it with the towel clip, first wire was passed through the trochlea, transverse wire, another wire was passed through the lateral column. And I'll share the video of passing that because that is also one of the initial, uh, Essential step. Is it visible? Uh, not yet, sir. Yes, sir, it's with you. The capitulum is identified with, you can see the rotation. Gently it is, the fragment is rotated, held with a K wire, and then it is reduced. It is essential to confirm the reduction in the articular area, being the most medial aspect anteriorly, and 
And once the reduction is confirmed, one wire is passed transverse, another is through the lateral column. This is the divergent. And it is checked under CM. And after, after that, we check the stability of fixation. This is the fixation. Bicortical approach is, bicortical fixation is checked. In our case, we have kept the wires inside because of risk of infection, which we have encountered earlier. So, and then forearm is supported with the plaster, above elbow plaster. And in these cases, many a times, if the fixation is good enough, we go for early mobilization of this. Here you can see that in one of our previous case, where open reduction was done, it got infected and led to a stiff elbow. Excessive soft tissue dissection may lead to uh, spur formation, which you can see here. That spur is formed, metaphyseal spur, and which can lead to, uh, it can be painful sometimes. So the dissection should be very gentle in our cases. Whenever we are going for anterolateral uh, exposure and Soft tissue should not be touched on the most posterior aspect. It is the mainly the anterior aspect where we are focusing an extensor origin is not uh, injured. That leads to good reduction and good, fix uh, good fixation and uh, early union also. Thank you. Sorry for a lot of interruptions. Uh, thank you, sir, for the presentation and apologies for all the uh, technical glitches today. We were not able to use the PowerPoint presentation and the videos also. Mm. Uh, no participants, you can uh, sh share your questions in the chat. Uh, but as of now, we don't have any questions, so we can take them at the end of the second talk together. Okay. So you can uh, stop your screen share. Uh, Harish, sir, can you please uh, share your screen? Harish, sir, I think you are still muted. No problem. 
can you can you hear me yes sir yes. okay and i'm now using my phone as a mic is there an echo Hello. Yes, sir. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I can hear you. Sir. Okay. So, greetings from uh, Vasudev Hospital, Bellary. So, I just want you all to be aware of this uh, innocuous injury. It looks sweet and innocent. Okay. So it's easy to pick up uh, these kind of uh, grossly displaced fractures. So before I go into the proper close reduction and uh, orthogram or approach, I just want to brief about how do we do close reduction, what is the mechanism of injury. Okay, so that's a brief introduction I want to give. Okay, so it is very difficult to pick up these kind of subtle fractures because there's very small ossified capital lum and the metaphyseal fragment. This is because the distal humerus, very young children, uh, is hugely cartilaginous. What we see next is a small part of the osphate capital under a thin layer of the metaphysis. So the correct treatment starts with the correct assessment of the soft tissue injury as well as the, the fracture pattern. So the soft tissue injury, we look at swelling, bruising, and instability. These indicate a disruption of the periostone, a significantly unstable fracture, and also a uh, collateral ligament injury. So once we are as clinically we have done with the assessment, you also have to look at the fracture anatomy to proper treatment, uh, plan or treatment properly. So the fracture anatomy, we need to get a proper view. So it's essential to get an internal oblique view in case of a sus all cases of suspected lateral condylar fractures because the fracture configuration differs in an AP view and an internal oblique view. So once we are done with the assessment, we need to look at the stability. Stability actually is has been described by uh, Song's staging. So what we see as very subtle fracture on an initial x-ray can lead to an can be an uh, subsequently become an unstable fracture because there will be break in the cartilage hinge this cartilage the fracture initially is held by this cartilage hinge subsequently by the pull of the common extensor origins the fracture can get displaced as seen here in the x-rays below so songs song has categorized this staging based on the amount of initial di displacement so if it is less than two mm pardon uh, sir, yeah. the slideshow is not moving, sir. Slides. Here, please move. It is stuck in which which slide? So the initial slide. Sir, I think you'll have to come out of the slideshow and do it manually. I think there was some issue previously also with uh, the previous okay. presentation. Okay. I'll stop screen share. Okay, sir. You are seeing which slide now? Uh, so the first slide. Okay, now? Uh, sir, it's on the first slide only. We are, uh, the slideshow has not started yet. Uh, now it's started, sir. Yes, sir. S started now? Yes, sir. The slideshow has started. We are on the first slide. Now the second slide of the hospital. Yes, sir. Okay. So I just wanted to say that we need to be aware of this innocuous injury because it looks sweet and innocent. It's very easy to pick up these uh, grossly displaced fractures. Is the slide moving now? Yes, sir. It's moving. Okay. So, because these subtle looking fractures, actually uh, huge fractures, because there's huge cartilage chunk uh, in the distal humerus, what we see on X is small part of the ossified uh, capitulum under thin layer of the metaphysis. But actually, it's a huge fragment. So, the correct treatment uh, starts with the correct assessment. We need to look at the soft tissue injury which indicates a significant disruption of the perostrum and a basically a unstable fracture pattern. So again, after assessing clinically, we need to look at the fracture anatomy and subsequently its stability. So to assess the anatomy, internal oblique view is essential in all cases of suspected uh, lateral condyle fractures because 
what we see on AP is completely different than what we see on an internal oblique view. So these three views are essential in all cases of suspected lateral condyle fractures. So once we determine the fracture anatomy, we have to look at its stability. So what is stable initial fracture can get displaced subsequently by the pull of the common extensor region because there will be break in the cartilage hinge. So Song described the five stages. The first three stages where the displacement is less than 2 mm. So basically stage 1 and stage 2 are considered as a stable fracture patterns because the cartilage hinge is intact. So, But it's very difficult to predict on an X-ray. So one, whenever you have a doubt, better to get an MRI. So stage from stage 3 onwards, these are considered as unstable fracture patterns. Obviously, stage 5 is displaced and dislocated. So the problem comes in stage 2 and stage 3 when to decide about its st stability. So to uh, treat these fracture patterns for any fracture pattern for that for fracture for that matter, we need to understand the mechanism of injury to do a close reduction. So the mechanism which is the commonly accepted mechanism pull off theory where the child falls on an outstretched stand with the forearm pronated and there's a various force at the elbow. This will cause traction on the lateral, lateral condyle fragment. There's a break in the metaphysis. Subsequently, it, at the fracture extent, as the force continues, the fracture extends into the cartilage hinge. And with continuing force, the fracture can displace to a varying degree. Okay. So the standard protocol for lateral condyle fractures is, if it's an early presentation, is there's a minimal displacement, less than 4 mm, song stage 3 onwards, we consider close reduction and pinning. So, of course, if it doesn't work, we have to always plan for an open reduction. And once with gross, gross displacement, have to be considered for open reduction. Though Song is described for even for kind, these kind of fractures, these can be treated uh, by closed methods. For me, it has not worked. I have a low threshold for open reduction. Okay. So, when I'm telling this closed reduction, I usually, for stage 3 and stage 4 is what I'm talking about for closed reduction. Okay. So the technique of close reduction is uh, summarized in this. Basically, you give traction initially, create recreate a varus force by uh, putting the elbow in varus force. You create a joint, the open up the joint space laterally, and then you manually push with a thumb or a, use a joystick, a cavernous joystick, into the fracture fragment and reduce the fracture fragment. And once you the fragment is in place, you get the elbow into valgus and supinate the elbow and sometimes you also can extend the wrist to relax the common extensors origin. So the, the supination of the forearm and valgus at the elbow will reduce the fracture fragment. Okay. So very often it's very difficult to, in very small channel like 3 years or 4 years, 5 years, it's very difficult to see the fracture fragment. Here you can see that I've just outlined the, the anticipated the fracture fragment. But on an X-ray on them, CM, even it's difficult to outline the fracture fragment. That's when an orthogram assisted out uh, delinting of the fracture fragment and reduction will help. So to avoid this small technical tip and doing an orthogram, avoid injecting dye from the lateral aspect to the fracture plane. This will most often will leak uh, the cause leakage of uh, dye into the soft tissues and this can obliterate the fracture fragment as well as make the reduction very difficult. So, so what I do and what it's advised is to inject a dye from the posterior aspect just proximal to the ulna or maybe our lateral middle side of the olecranon tip. So there's a soft spot and it's very easy to locate the elbow joint. So once the dye is injected, your fragment, you can uh, outline, the dye will outline the fracture fragment. So here you can see that I'm giving a varus force and I'm trying to reduce the, uh, the fracture by the thumb pressure. So once that is done, I've supinated the forearm and brought the elbow into the valgus so that uh, the radial head will push the capital and uh, uh, the fragment will go back into its place. <clears throat> so you can you can uh, you confirm the reduction in both the views, okay, and you check for the articular reduction and the metaphysical alignment. <clears throat> so once that is done, we, uh, uh, it is advisable to put at least two wires. If it's a large child, you can put in a screw. Otherwise, two K wires, in oblique fashion, placed at forty five degrees is more than enough. <clears throat> okay, so this is a child of done treated by close reduction with orthogram assisted load reduction and pinning. So you can see the uh, the fracture is healed very well. <clears throat> so this is another child, the same child I've shown earlier. Uh, 
So this again, child was treated with nathrium assisted reduction. Okay, you can see the initial the dye you have injected from posterior aspect, just prox starting proximal to the ulna tip, I mean distal to the yeah, proximal to the ulna tip. So the dye has outlined distal humerus, the radial head as well as the distal uh, the fracture fragment. So the reduction was achieved as said earlier, as mentioned earlier, with the same technique, and the fracture was fixed. So we can see very long spur on the lateral, the lateral epicondyle. I don't, it didn't exactly could figure out what exactly was that. The fracture went on to heal one, but there was a significant lateral spur. This is probably, I think this is because of the significant soft tissue injury. So whenever I see lateral condyle fracture, I always tell the parents that there can be a lateral prominence and which can cause pseudovirus. Okay. This child went on to, I mean, cleanly functionally, the child was well only, except that there was pseudovirus because of the lateral, con lateral condyle prominence. <clears throat> so now coming to the open reduction. <laughs> So I think sir has already talked about the lateral approach. There are two approaches, okay. So the first of all, the indications for these for the lateral condyle open reduction is the complete, obviously the completely dispersed fractures, and the ones where you can't touch even now uh, close reduction, and always the late presenting lateral condyle fractures. So there are two approaches, lateral or posterior. There is a common fear that uh, the posterior approach will devascularize the the fracture fragment. It's actually not. The whatever the blood supply is coming to the lateral condyle fracture, it would have already got disrupted with a displaced fracture fragment. So the key to any approach in lateral condyle fracture is you have to preserve the soft tissue attachments. So basically the common extensor origin. So lateral approach I prefer in Mills type one, and in some of these, some of those type two fractures where the lateral the fracture line is somewhat lateral rather than a typical uh, fracture line Mills type to where it crosses the uh, capitulum and enters the trochlea. So for most of other fractures, the Mills type 2 fractures and late presenting fractures, the chronic uh, lateral condyle fracture, what we call, I prefer a poster, what we call posterior lateral approach. Okay. So uh, the position what I use is a child with a uh, lateral position with arm hanging over a support like this. So this is the incision I use, start from the, uh, just lateral to the midline and extend across the elbow, lateral to the olecranon process in between the olecranon process and the lateral epicondyle. So the simple uh, dissection is quite uh, straightforward. The intramuscular plane is between the triceps and the brachioradialis, brachioradialis and ECRB, ECRL on the lateral side, triceps on the medial side. Okay, so once you develop a plane, you open the capsule, the fry your right, this is actually a chronic, uh, this is an image of a chronic uh, non-union lateral condyle fracture. So whereas in an acute fracture, the dissection is quite easy because all the, because the new fracture is already plain is developed. Once you reflect and retract the triceps, you don't need to cut the triceps. You just need to retract it. You place your bone levers on either side of the distal humerus. You can see the fracture fragment completely. So once you're done, you can manually reduce the fracture or you can use an KYS to use it as joystick. I'm sure you're getting the orientation of the uh, anatomy, the this thing exposure here. So I marked it proximal. This is distal. This is medial and lateral. So this is the the fracture fragment. This is the articular surface. So this is the fracture surface here. Because this is a chronic monte, the chronic lateral condyle fracture. The anatomy is somewhat distorted here. Okay, I don't have an image where the, of the acute lateral condyle fracture. That's why I used the ones with the. Uh, the chronic ones. So once the fracture is reduced, in older children, I I prefer to fix with a screw and a K wire. In younger children, very young children, like play like five or six or seven, I put two oblique K wires. Okay. So the fracture went on to heal well. Again, you can see a lateral spur here. So this child had a reasonably good function for a chronic fracture. So always remember this is an intraarticular fracture. Aim for aim for perfect articular reduction, like any intraarticular fractures. And since it's a precarious blood, there is a precarious blood supply. Preserve the soft tissue attachments. Okay. So for a comprehensive reading of acute lateral condyle fractures, you can refer to my article published last year in the Journal of Orthopedic Association of South India. So it's a free access, open access uh, article. Okay. Thanks for attending. And thanks for giving this opportunity. Thank you, sir. Uh, 
for the uh, wonderful talk and explaining the close reduction and the posterior approach um, um with this um today's session will also be on the ortho tv's uh, channel it's already being uh, uh, shown live and then there'll be a recording for people who missed the session also they can view it later so uh, i want to thank on behalf of the ortho kids i want to thank both the faculty for their time and efforts for the session i i apologize for the technical glitches yeah so i i also don't know i think there was some issue with the slide show and the slide show was not working and screen share also had some issues so laptop apologies suddenly, my laptop suddenly it stopped the zoom app stopped working there to switch out the other computer okay so, uh, so as of now we we don't have any uh, questions now i think uh, so we can conclude the session sure thank you thank you ritesh sir thank you harish sir next saturday we'll uh, uh, join for a session on montegia fractures reduction techniques thanks for the opportunity thank you sir thank you thank you john thank, thank you all you. thank you sir